Hi guys and welcome back to episode 4 of our trail finding game for the microbit using Python. Last time we left off we just implemented a switch in which allowed us to state whether the play, uh, whether we were currently playing the game or whether we were displaying something to the user. So the idea is when we first start uh, this playing boolean um, is set to a value of false. Um, what that allows us to do is when we first play the game we enter into this loop um, we generate a new trail, we print our trail, we sleep for two seconds, then we set our playing uh, boolean equal to true, at which point this here uh, becomes false because we are playing, so instead of going into this section, we'll go into this else section of the loop, at which point we just print the player, and all that does is we're just printing the current player position onto our game board. Now we're going to actually implement for the first time using buttons. Um, and all we're going to do is we're going to give our player the chance to move right or move left. Um, uh, move right or move down, sorry. And the way we're going to do this is basically we have a bit of an issue because our what our boolean, uh, what our button press allows us to do is we can check a function which says if the B button was pressed, do this. If the A button was pressed, then do this. Now, the issue with that is, well, what happens if our play is here and we go into our sleep for 500, okay? We go into this function here and we sleep for 500 seconds. And the player presses the B button and they press the A button. Well, what's going to happen is if I have a check-in which just says if the B button was pressed, move right, and a check which says if the A button was pressed move down, then they're going to move to here and they're going to be allowed to do two things at once. So all we're going to do is to get around that, we're going to use something called an if else if. And what we're going to say is if the B button was pressed, do this. Else, if the A button was pressed, do this. And all that's going to do is it's going to say they can only do one thing or the other and in the case when they have pressed both if they've pressed the B button then we ignore the A button press it we will only look at the B button press so let's get uh, just writing this it's a fairly simple piece of code that we need to write so all I'm going to say is if the B button has been pressed if button underscore B dot was pressed I think that's the function then we are just going to say add one onto our player position x value uh, player pos zero our x value is going to have one added to it and uh, we're also going to want to increment our player trail location so add one onto the player's current position on the trail. And we're just going to say player underscore trail underscore location. That's right in it. Yeah. Plus equals one. And there we go. That's that's all we need. So we've moved our player by one pixel and we've incremented their current location on the trail by one as well. And uh, now we're going to do the same thing. If the A button was pressed and the B button was not pressed, and we use something here called an elif, so else if button A dot was pressed, then add one onto our player position y value so we're going to take the first element and we're going to add one to it so we're incrementing our y value by one and we're also going to add one onto the player's current position on the trail so now I've written this, let's just give it a go. Let's see what's happened. Uh, I'm fairly sure this should run. Uh, however, I can't give any guarantees. So let's get that uploading. And 
Let's get recording the micro bit. Okay, so we're showing the trail and we have our player location. When I press B, we move right. If I press both, we move right and down. Hmm, that's not very good, is it? So, what we're doing there is I've, mis I've misjudged this a little bit. Um, however, it might actually end up with desired functionality. Um, basically, if our button B was pressed, then we run this code, and when we check if button B was pressed, then we're going to set the value of this to false. But, because our button A was also pressed, when we come round again, button B has no longer been pressed because they've not pressed it again, but button A was pressed. So one thing we could actually do to get around that is uh, we're going to say set button B press to false. This stops us from moving down the next time the loop is run. So we're going to just say button A dot was pressed. And by calling that function, we're not checking anything with it but we're actually setting the value of that to false, as far as I'm aware. So let's give that a go. It's gonna happen now when we run both of them. Hit both of them at the same time. Okay, so, press on both, and we're just moving right now. Or are we? Yeah, it seems so. So we did have one occasion there where we moved right and left. Uh, right and down, sorry. Um, I'm assuming the reason for that is because we must have pressed this button B just before this sleep ran out and we came round again. Uh, so the code does run really fast, so we will be able to. But basically, we've, made, we've discouraged the user from pressing two buttons at the same time. Because let's face it, that's it's pretty pointless for them to do that. Um, we definitely don't want to incentivize it, but we also want to make sure that they're not doing it. Um, so now what we're going to do, well, we've got it set up so that we can move our player. Uh, but well, what happens if I just keep pressing B? The player is going to go off the screen um, and they're going to die. Uh, basically, if the player is going to press right when they're already on the furthest right, We'll make that a lose condition. Um, but before we do that, um, I just want to write in a check, which is going to basically, we're just going to test that this code works and it's going to allow us to follow the trail. So whenever we've updated, um, I'm just going to check whether our current player position is equal to the correct position in the trail, where it should be, um, which is going to actually involve me having to remember these trails when we first start playing. Um, so what I'm going to say is uh, check whether the player position is equal to the correct trail position. That's not current trail position. Let's say. Uh, And we're going to do that by saying if the player position is equal to the trail current uh, player trail location, sorry, which is this element here. Remember that we increment whenever a button has been pressed. So if they are equal, and we have to specify is equal with this double equals sign, otherwise, we're talking about. Um, an assignment which is something different then if if we are in the correct uh, location then let's just say uh, do nothing let's just create any random variable z um, g 
and set it equal to zero. We're, do, we're doing we're doing nothing effectively. Okay. Um, otherwise, we're going to uh, reset the game. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a new function that we're going to write called initialize. Actually, we're going to move this. We're going to write it at the top because that just makes sense, doesn't it? You'd have your initialize function as your first function. I'm just going to say define uh, initialize and we're going to want to reset all our variables back to initial values. Uh, we don't have to do anything for this trail uh, because we generate that. Um, however, we are going to have to set our player position equal to our trail again. And we're going to have to set our player trail location also equal to zero. Um, we can ignore this playing boolean. Uh, we'll reset that um, uh, another place in the code. Uh, but, yep, so that's all we need to do really, isn't it? Um, for the time being, there's nothing else we need to do. Um, except um, Python uses something called global variables. And basically, uh, because of the way the code is written, because of the way the memory works, we can't, this player position here, because we're inside of a function, is defining a new player position. Okay? It won't be the same one. So, in order to look at the same version of player position, I have to create a global variable. And same for the player trail location. And then inside of my function where I use these, I'm also going to have to get those global variables from the from the main part of the code. It's quite complicated this. All you really need to know is for me to see these from outside, because they're not lists, because they're set uh, variables, uh, I need to do I need to do this, otherwise I, I can't use those variables. So let's say uh, get global variables uh, and when we initialize we're just going to set playing equal to false which means if you remember correctly we've so we've reset back to initial state uh, we're going to come back into here we're going to generate a new trail show it to the user and then we're going to go through this code again and let them let them move along that trail so this is actually completely unnecessary uh, we're going to get rid of this basically I wanted to show you um, instead of having an SL if else we can just say if not and that will achieve the same thing so we don't have to actually create a function uh, create a step where we do nothing we can just get rid of that and say if not player position so we're saying if the current player position is not on the trail then let's stop playing let's reinitialize the game uh, let's sleep for half a second and then let's go back in and um, we're going to come back in at uh, this section here because playing is now equal to true uh, to false sorry so this should work I'm hoping so let's just get that onto the micro bit and See if I can remember this trail. See how hard we've actually made this game. So we're going right once, down once, right once, down once, down once. Nope. So that's given us an error. Line 44. Value. Error. 
index out of bounds. Okay, so we've got an error now. It was on line 44, so let's go and have a look. Uh, so that's on this print trail. And I'm not sure why we are actually getting that error. Uh, so we were following the trail correctly. And then... We got to this bit, I'm assuming, where we were no longer on the trail. So playing equals false, we reinitialized. And we called this generate trail. And then we printed the trail. And when we were printing the trail, we got to line. 44, at which point one of the pixels was wrong. So I'm assuming uh, we might actually have an error somewhere which is allowing us to create pixels that aren't on the screen. I'm just going to actually reset this and have another go. Um, I'm just going to record it as well so you guys can see. And I'm going to have a go at this a few times. We're going to see if we can recreate that error uh, consistently because if we can, it means we know what it is. So. Reset that, okay, so. So, so long as I'm following that, don't get an error. As soon as I'm no longer on that trail, so there we've got an index out of bounds on line 106. If I can see my mouse, we can see that that's because we've actually we're looking at an element that doesn't exist because we've gone off the edge of the trail. So that is expected actually. So let's have another go. Let's see what else we can do. So let's go right, which is on the trail, and then right again is off the trail. And we've got line 44. Same error again. So we found out that it's whenever we actually go off of the trail that we're getting this error. So we're generating it correctly the first time. And then something strange, really strange is happening there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, spend a bit of time working over what's on with this error. Um, we'll be discussing it in next episode next week. Um, it seems to me as if we're doing something in the code here uh, which is actually changing the value of something that we shouldn't be changing the value of and I have no idea what that is um, don't think it's going to be anything to do with this initialize that we've written uh, this function but it could very well be but it's going to take me a little bit of time to figure out what's wrong here so what we'll do is we'll call this in a day for episode 4 uh, thank you very much for watching once again. I hope that you've learned something once again. And as you can see, we're actually uh, getting quite well on our way to having a version of this game implemented that actually works. So, um, as before, uh, please don't be afraid to post any comments if you have any questions. Um, definitely go back, uh, watch through the older videos if you have any questions, um, if there's something that's not quite clicked. Uh, I'm going to have a link here just to the... Uh, previous video episode 3 which will also going up today and my next episode which will go up next Thursday you will be available from here um, next week so thank you very much guys once again for watching I hope that you've learned something and uh, see you next week cheers